Technology may be a marker for brains being turned off. Uh, in fact, <laughs> technology in the period that you're talking about implies triggers of cognition, consciousness, and culture that I suspect we like to think of as an advantage for Homo sapiens. But what do anthropologists think about cognition, culture, and uh, you know these 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 questions of, of uh, technology use? Chris. Um, well, yeah, I think that one thing that modern humans did, and it's more a social thing, really, um, was, was you know, we're great networkers. Uh, and I think that that gave us an advantage. So if we look at the, the archaeological record, and I'm, I'm sort of getting onto Alison's territory here again, but, um, you know, there, there are long periods of what you could call relatively slow change in the stone tools through hundreds of thousands of years. Then when we get to modern humans, particularly in the last 100,000 years, we do see s certainly a build-up of more rapid change. And I think that that reflects social changes because archaic humans, even probably including the Antarctic to an extent, were living locally in smaller numbers and they weren't networking to the extent across the landscape with, with, their, with other groups. Modern humans increasingly in Africa and then exported from Africa are living more densely and networking, covering wider ranges in trading with each other, signaling to each other with shell beads and red ochre probably, pigments. And this means that good ideas can take hold and spread. And that's what we find today. Good ideas today are conserved and they spread like wildfire. Um, that's because there are lots of us and loads of ways of storing the information. And it wasn't like that in the distant past. But when you get to modern humans, we start to see that accumulation of ideas within groups because they're networking with each other. And also there's a much greater generational transfer. It's not till we get to modern humans that you find a lot of old people preserved in the fossil record. Um, so the good news is for, for the elderly that, that they were certainly useful. In, so in, elderly in the were a marker that, that culture was actually happening. Can we be more precise? about when culture began other than tools kind of going viral? Uh. Well, well, I think that you see different aspects of behavior changing over time. And we keep pushing these, these things back. So, um, yes, as Chris mentioned, we have, if we, if, if we work backward from the time when modern humans have taken over in Europe and the Neanderthals are essentially disappearing. That's the period in Europe where we have the great cave paintings. I don't know if... Um, and um, some of the things that we think of as the, the, the sort of acme of, of uh, Stone Age achievement. So um, what are we looking at here? What we're looking at here is a painting from Grotte Chauvet in France, in the Ardèche. And these are dated to somewhere in the early 30,000s, maybe 30, 32 to 35, somewhere in there. Um, our radiocarbon dates are less precise than we'd like them to be these days because there's a big argument about how to prepare the samples before you get to the date. Um, but this is an extraordinary painting of lionesses, um, probably hunting. And it's in a cave that is a treasure trove of paintings like this. And um, we have evidence of all kinds of images. And um, there's been an argument that this was an explosive development after humans left um, Africa and confronted the cold. Whether I have um, Russian colleagues who not surprisingly think you have to have cold weather to develop a fully <laughs> modern culture. Well, um, but, of course um, you do, yes. But the, the fact is, and I have another uh, picture from um, a different part of the world from approximately the same age. Um, this is a painting of a human. Notice that the legs on the left are human and the, the creature to, on the right is an animal. So it's a, a human who seems to be transforming into an animal. And that's a very common theme we find in this very early art. And where is this, this from? This is from Namibia in southwest Africa. It's also 30,000 years old or a little bit older. It's recently been redated mm -hmm. to that time period. And um, there, there are a couple of images from that cave like this. And then there's another one that is working its way to publication. Um, and I think these are in a, a late Middle Stone Age type uh, setting, but they are dated to 
more or less the same ballpark as the Chauvet paintings, but at the other end of the world. So what this says to me is that the people who left Africa were part of a tradition that could do this mm -hmm. if they had to. This isn't something that developed among the pe only among the people who left. This was already there. Mm -hmm. So then we have to go back and say, where did this begin? Mm -hmm. And if we go back before this, we see that um, there are not images before this, but there are geometric designs on ochre and there are shell beads. Mm -hmm. And so, so artifacts, costume artifacts, artifacts indicate a, a, a culture trigger taking place. And these are, where are these from here? These are from the southern tip of Africa at a place called Blombos, which is right where Africa comes to a point down at the bottom. And if you look at them very carefully, you can see, I don't know if you can see this in the, in the picture, but um, one of the things about these shells is that they've all been perforated in a place that would enable them to be strung, but it isn't a good place. If you're a marine uh, snail predator interested in eating another snail, you're not going to make a hole in its lip because you're not going to get to the other snail that way. You're going to go for the, for the body. So these are um, possibly, uh, arguably, maybe the perforations are made by humans. But what we can see in these perforations is that they're all polished on one edge, particularly the one in the upper right. Um, has a polished edge that can only come from wearing it on a string for a long time. And they also have some microscopic traces of red ochre on them, hmm. which come from wearing them on a string on a body that has red ochre paint on it. So it's quite likely that these are people who had a very rich array of symbols that told you in, as soon as you saw them who they were. And they said, I'm a whoever, I'm a Southern African from Pinnacle Point. Date this and for us. And, and this is also, this is um, about the same age as the beads. It's about 70, 75,000 years old. And so this is one of these geometric designs. Um, and there are several others from this cave and other sites mm -hmm. where we have some sort of, ge of design. It's not an image that we recognize as an animal but it's a design that's been placed on a little slab of ochre about this big. And the argument here is that people are making durable symbols in some way that carry information about who they are or about um, something in their world that was important. And the fact that they are able to walk around with these symbols on them or to leave them in places where other humans are going to come along and find them and say, you know, it's like Kilroy was here. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, it sort of says, it might have said, the beads might have said, I'm married, you can't have me. Or it might have said, um, I'm a big chief and, or a big uh, important person. Or um, purely marking territory. Or just marking territory. And I think it's just worth saying that this, in a sense, doesn't do justice to the object, because when that was freshly done, it would have been a vivid red, blood yes. red, yeah. you know, color. Right. 